Well, hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services. I'm also the creator of a 30-day online nutrition program for people who have Hashimoto's called Nourished and Renewed with Hashimoto's, and you can find out more about that program in the pinned comments below. So today, we're right in the middle of two holidays, Christmas last week, and New Year's Eve is tomorrow. And finally, a new year is upon us. I know a lot of us are feeling pretty optimistic, but maybe cautiously so. 2020 has been a very weird year in more ways than one. For starters, for those of you in my YouTube community who are watching today's video, and if you have been directly affected by this worldwide COVID-19 pandemic, if you have contracted the illness or someone in your family has, if you've experienced a loss, I just want to extend my warmest condolences and sympathy. I don't want to overshadow those losses when we say things like this was a doozy of a year or, you know, this year really sucked or whatever. I do want to acknowledge that there are so many people who have faced a lot of loss and a lot of illness. And because I work in the holistic health industry, I work with a lot of people who have, in fact, been sick. Also, there are a lot of the allied healthcare providers who refer clients to me and vice versa. And our community has been hit hard as well. We know this year has been challenging on many levels. Obviously, the COVID pandemic has been probably the biggest thing to ever happen in our lifetime. And also, there have been uncertainties in the economy, We've had our kids at home more, maybe working from home. We've changed the way we do things like exercise, maybe even the way that we eat. So for those of us that are in the healthcare industry, we're doing all we can to support our clients, our community, our loved ones, and even our family and friends right here at home. Every year around Christmas and New Year's, people do start to call me more often than not because they're ready to make the next year ahead better than the one that we just had. This year, as we wrap up 2020, has been particularly interesting because people are reaching out with a whole new set of goals and concerns and interest in their health. So today I wanted to share with you some tips that you can start to do right away. If you're thinking about 2021 being better for you in terms of your overall optimal and most vital health, but you don't know where to start, this video is for you. I want to share with you what I would consider to be the foundation of basically a post-holiday detox. It doesn't require anything fancy, no special supplements, no challenging or complicated ingredients or recipes some basic information that you actually already know in here and in your heart and in your body. But I'm here to support you as you embrace some changes to help make 2021 and even just the days, weeks, and months ahead better than maybe you ever thought possible. If you've gotten into some unhealthy habits, if you've gained some weight, we've all talked about the COVID-19, being something other than the virus itself, but in fact, maybe the number on the scale has moved in the wrong direction. Or if you've been concerned about supporting your immune system, now is the time to do that. It's not too late. So today I'm going to be sharing with you basically what I would consider to be a seven-day jumpstart on your health to get you ready for 2021. So yeah, seven days would be a minimum, but of course you could do this for longer if you desire. There's really no limit on how long you can consume healthy foods. In fact, for many of you, especially if you're coming from a place of being healthy, but then slipping back into some old habits, really this for you is going to be your foundation diet, and you're just getting back to what you already know works quite well for supporting your health. But of course, as December wraps up and we've just finished celebrating all of the winter holidays, the days have been shorter and darker. We probably have maybe some less than optimal things in our diet, maybe some junk food or even fast food, and probably also sweets and alcohol. 
The thing about winter is, is that it is a lot more difficult to consume fresh foods like produce because it's not the growing season and it's not the harvest season. And we have to work a little bit harder to seek out some of those ideal seasonal vegetables and fruits that are available from our grocery stores. But it can be difficult to get started. So I'm going to give you some tips and ideas and then it'll take you maybe some time to get used to some new foods and maybe a new way of eating. But I know you can make the time and commitment necessary to eat this way for January, February, and for the long run. So seven days following a program like this will help to jumpstart your nutritional health and it will also give you motivation and probably reward you with a newfound sense of well-being, energy, and maybe even a little bit of weight loss. Who wouldn't like that right now? So I want to start out by saying that when I'm referencing particular foods, I'm absolutely talking about organic as much as possible. We live in a world, unfortunately, where the pesticides, herbicides, manufacturing processes, and all of the different additives, colorings, flavorings, etc., that are in our foods are actually harmful for our bodies. And if something is using an organic standard by which to measure the quality of its ingredients or the food itself, we know that extra special care has gone into that food. And so it's easier today than ever before to a, know where to shop for organic foods, and it's also becoming much more affordable because consumer demand actually has allowed the market to respond effectively. So if you hear me reference something, say like baby spinach, I am actually talking about organic as much as possible, as much as you can find it. And also if I'm talking about chicken or grass-fed beef, I'm also talking about the highest quality proteins that you can find in your local area. So keep in mind that organic is really the first and foremost place for you to start with your health this January. Here are some things to start thinking about avoiding. I don't want you to feel like this is a restrictive diet or that this is really like a Debbie Downer of a process as we move away from the holiday and joyful and maybe overindulgent uh, season, right, of certain kinds of foods. But maybe by now you're starting to recognize that some of these foods don't serve you very well anyway. So don't think of this as a foods to avoid list, but maybe more of the like eh, foods that don't work so well for me anymore. That's the way I like to think about them. So we're going to start with sugar. And if you want to watch some of my other videos about sugar, I talk about this subject a lot. In fact, I've written a whole blog post about the perils of sugar and the way that it affects our bodies. And in particular, the bodies and the health of our children. So check that out. You can watch that video. But sugar and all sugar products, that includes candy and cookies and chocolate and foods that have added refined sugars to them. We want to try to maybe stay away from those. If A, you know that it's a slippery slope and sugar tends to be quite addicting for many of us, but also if you've found that you've had some big changes in your digestion, like maybe you know, you're not going as frequently, your regularity has changed, or if you're even having digestive discomfort and or looser ur urgent stools, that could also be related to sugar or a bacterial imbalance in your gut as, or, as it relates to too much sugar consumption. Secondly, think about if you have been indulging too much in dairy products, and I will raise my hand right now. This is most definitely me during the holidays. I basically have four vices and not in any particular order, but chocolate, cheese, wine, and coffee. And so if I've ever start, started to consume too many of those foods too often, then I know it's time for me to take a little bit you know, of a break. And for sure, dairy for me, while I'm not especially dairy intolerant, I know that it affects my system, and because I have both Hashimoto's and celiac disease, I'm pretty careful with antigenic proteins from things like dairy. Now, I always source out the highest quality dairy, expensive cheeses. Let me tell you, cheese is not a cheap vice. And when the holiday season comes around, I love to have a hard-aged Parmesan or a Manchego cheese or a sprinkle of, um, you know, good mozzarella or something on, on top of a delicious homemade gluten-free pasta dish, time to rein it in. Okay, so dairy foods, they can be disruptive. Even goat and sheep's milk cheeses, if you've been consuming them too much, things to be paying attention to would be changes in your skin if you're getting breakouts, if you're noticing that you have sinus pain or congestion, if you feel kind of mucusy or you're clearing your throat a lot, coughing after you eat a meal that contains dairy products, 
time to think about those foods not being as supportive anymore. And then the next, of course, is wheat and gluten. If you have Hashimoto's and you're watching this video, you've already watched my other video about why you should consider giving up gluten for the long run. But if you don't have Hashimoto's and you're new here, even to my channel or just popping in for this video today, gluten can also be problematic for many people, even those who don't have autoimmune illness, who don't have celiac disease, and who don't have Hashimoto's. Gluten, pretty much the word is in the name, which is glue, can kind of gum up our intestines, can slow down digestion, it can affect our transit time, can create constipation or diarrhea, it can disrupt the microbiome, and on and on and on. If you're prone towards a leaky gut, this inclusion of gluten and wheat in your regular diet can also lead towards leaky gut symptoms, like, you know, all kinds of weird food intolerances, a weakened immune system, bloating, and so on and so forth. We don't want to open up our guts and allow things to pass from the digestive side into the bloodstream side unless it's a nutrient. So if you've been consuming a lot of biscuits and bread and cookies and crackers of the gluten variety, time to rein it in and think about the ways in which you can support your digestive health and your immune system health better by eliminating that particular food. All right, next comes the tricky ones, right? Caffeine and alcohol. This time of year, staying up late, maybe doing a Zoom happy hour with your college best friends, uh, maybe sitting out you know, by a fire pit somewhere outdoors, participating in the little communion that we have with others and indulging just a bit, imbibing in spirits, beer, wine, or on the other end, really going hard on the coffee to keep us going through these busy days, especially when it's darker and the days are shorter and our circadian rhythm starts to become a little bit off, right? There's seasonal affective disorder, vitamin D deficiencies, changes in our cortisol pattern and our melatonin patterns. We get tired. It's a fact. So the change of seasons has us leaning on things like coffee to pick us up and the holidays and this busy time of year, maybe some isolation, a little bit of depression from the COVID pandemic has us imbibing in some alcohol. These are the things that, especially in the winter, we want to pay close attention to if they are interfering with our optimal health. If you're dehydrated, if you're exhausted, if you're cranky, if you're getting breakouts in your skin, if your menstrual cycle has started to become irregular, and if you're gaining weight, it's possible that either the caffeine in coffee has been stimulating too much cortisol production, or the alcohol in your favorite cocktail is starting to unbalance your hormones a little bit and potentially even causing some estrogen dominance, which kind of goes hand in hand with alcohol consumption if you're doing it too often. So with caffeine and alcohol, assess your relationship with them. If you're just having one cup of coffee per day, I'm not talking to you. If you're like drinking a pot and then having an espresso in the afternoon, think about switching in for maybe some green tea. As far as alcohol goes, maybe rather than just going cold turkey, although dry January is a great way to start the new year. Going cold turkey can be kind of difficult, especially if it's a big part of your routine. Maybe just think about diluting some of your favorite spirits with more sparkling water, switching to kombucha, or maybe even going with something like a low sugar, low alcohol wine that you can get from Dry Farm Wines, and you can find a link in the pinned comments below to learn more about that wonderful company um, that really does produce and source wines that are kind of good for your health. So I'm not advocating just to switch one vice for another, but to actually just reassess the way that you're consuming these types of beverages and to enjoy them in moderation when the occasion arises, but not to be, you know, sort of the uh, coping skills that maybe aren't the best for us this time of year. There are certainly some other things that may be in your diet right now, things that are heavily processed. We know looking at a bag of Doritos, there's probably some ingredients in there that we shouldn't be having. Bag of M&Ms, same thing. These foods are brightly colored and loaded with Franken foods. These foods do not support health in any way. And in fact, they just 
you know, they detract from our health. They don't offer vitamins and minerals. They don't offer good quality fiber. Uh, they don't really give us energy. In fact, they can drain our energy. So staying away from the little treats, the junk food, the processed food, the fast food, the drive through even Starbucks, um, and all of those crazy caramel, frappuccino, holiday versions of things that have become the norm. Time to just take a little break from the indulgences. Um, also, another thing that maybe it's time to reassess is your relationship with any protein shakes or supplements that you've been consuming because you want to be healthy even if you have some other habits that you're trying to change. Take a look at the ingredients in your protein shake. Make sure it's really working for you. Make sure you're not consuming it too frequently because it can be at times hard on the kidneys, especially if you're a little dehydrated. The ingredients might contain things like whey or soy protein isolates, which also might be contributing to some of your fatigue or mid-belly weight gain. Also, a lot of the protein powders that you can find on the shelves, even in a health food store, may have some added sweeteners or sugar or other ingredients that are just kind of empty calories. So I say this lovingly because, you know, sometimes a protein shake is the best thing we've got going in a given day. If we haven't planned, haven't made it to the grocery store, we're stressed out, we're burning the candle at both ends, we're just lucky we got in a protein shake. But if this has become a crutch or a replacement for real food, time to reevaluate that for sure. Instead, things to focus on consuming, the right types of protein that are health supportive. Now, I know I have some vegans and vegetarians who watch my channel, and so, you know, take this with a grain of salt, literally. Um, consider that there may be some animal protein alternatives for you if you sense that you need some rebuilding support, right? So when we feel run down, sick, we know we need to be kind of nurtured and nourished from the inside out. Sometimes protein fits that bill. Broth bone broth is a great way to incorporate this more healthfully than just sitting down to a big T-bone steak. You can just think of protein as a side dish or as a condiment on top of your plant-based meals so that you're getting some of those balanced amino acids that are essential to our bodies and kind of hard to get even from some of the best planned out uh, vegan and vegetarian meals. But protein from organic or pasture-raised chicken and turkey, grass-fed beef, bison and lamb. Those are all really great sources, not only of protein, but also of zinc and the amino acid called carnitine, which helps to support body composition, lean mass and metabolism. And also B12 is one of the few vitamins that's only found in animal protein. Also animal protein can be a great source of iron. And so for some of us, who tend to go a little on the anemic side, women in particular, I'm talking to you, if you know that you tend toward anemia and maybe in the winter time, it's time to start thinking about incorporating some of these animal proteins into your diet. Also, I advocate strongly for game meat like venison, elk, ostrich, even rabbit, and of course, wild caught cold water fish like salmon, halibut, and mackerel. Not every day, you're not gonna have these foods every day, but maybe once a week or a couple times a month, you can bring in some of these alternative proteins and seafood to really round out your diet. Pasture-raised eggs, meaning those chickens are some happy ladies. They are living on pasture. They are eating bugs. They are eating grass. They are eating worms. They are eating what they're supposed to be eating. They are not eating meal with cut-off beaks caged uh, in a confined feeding space. Okay, that's not the kind of eggs I'm talking about. Happy hens, happy eggs you eat them, you feel good. It provides a great source of choline, which is great for the brain, the nervous system, your eyes, memory, and mood. And also there is a great, uh, in addition to it being a great source of protein, also additional uh, great source of zinc, um, which supports the immune system. So eggs, as long as you tolerate them and you know you don't have any issues, that's a great food to include. Try to include more of the right kinds of cooking oils as we transition into the new year. Coconut oil, organic preferably for cooking and even for adding to cooked vegetables after they've been maybe roasted or baked in the oven. Um, I also use a lot of coconut 
butter, which is kind of like coconut oil, but a little bit creamier. Um, great source of healthy fats. Um, you can use that as like a condiment. Also cooking um, a light saute with olive oil. Using other oils like a cold pressed flaxseed oil to make salad dressings to, in, uh, to up your omega-3 uh, inclusion of um, fatty acids in your diet. And really to try to stay away from some of those more processed, refined oils. Definitely no on the canola oil. Uh, watch out for things like sunflower, safflower, these highly refined polyunsaturated fatty acids, which in small amounts, you know, when they come from things like nuts and seeds, are really good for our body. They do contribute an important omega-6 fatty acid. But unfortunately, in our standard American modern diet, all of the processed foods that are shelf stable and have these hydrogenated um, or shelf stable oils means that we're getting too much omega-6. So keep an eye out, check labels. Um, there are a lot of resources on the web. In fact, I always mention the Environmental Working Group as a great resource for finding out more information about um, the best types of uh, oils and products that you can buy for your home. They are a consumer advocate group and they are watching out to make sure that uh, the foods that are being manufactured and sold to you as a consumer are really meeting the highest quality standards. So check out ewg.org. Definitely from a produce standpoint, find the things that are growing right now, things that are seasonal, things that are local. If you live in a tropical place, well, congratulations, and I'm very jealous. You can continue to enjoy probably lots of fresh fruits and vegetables year round. For the rest of us, it's not that easy to get strawberries in the middle of December. So you're thinking about shopping for the things at your local um, health food store that maybe have been grown within a 100 mile radius or at the most maybe a 1000 mile radius. I know that's still a lot, but think about blueberries that were picked in Chile and then transported by a truck, flown on a plane, transported by another truck, transported by another truck, and then sat in your grocer's fridge or freezer and then sat on the shelf and then come home, comes home to your grocery store. I hate to tell you that that $6.99 pint of organic blueberries probably doesn't have a whole lot of nutritional value by the time that it reaches you, not to mention it has a terrible footprint in terms of its impact on our um, environment and um, you know the ecosystem in which we live. We want to try to source our foods as close as possible. So I live in Colorado and I know that in the winter time a lot of my food comes from California and Mexico. Our growing season is short here and whatever I wasn't able to freeze from either our summer garden or the summer farmers market um, or anything you know that we have maybe in cans. I don't can, but I have a friend who does, and sometimes I'm lucky to get uh, some of those uh, canned vegetables or fruits and things like that. You really do have to shop wisely and think carefully about where your food is coming from. So winter is a great time for citrus. Winter is a great time for apples and pears. Um, also other unique fruits like um, persimmon, or maybe you even wanna think about pomegranate. Um, kiwis, they are also um, a winter food, but you know, kiwis are kind of known in New Zealand and that's way across the pond. So how about sourcing some of those um, as close to home as possible? Um, as far as vegetables, it's a great season for root vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, rutabaga, um, kohlrabi, you can still get a lot of parsnips, carrots, turnips, all kinds of squashes are still available and relatively still very much in season, even pumpkins. Um, and um, there are places, of course, where uh, hydroponic, uh, organic uh, production of greens and tomatoes uh, may be available in your local area. There is some debate still as to whether or not this is as nutrient um, available uh, when they're grown in this way. So, uh, you know, know your farmer, know your shop, your uh, shopping grocer. Um, and uh, for many of you, maybe you've already been part of a community shared agriculture group, a CSA from a local farm, and you might still be getting a winter box, which is wonderful. And you'll be seeing what your farmer has saved up and, and planned uh, to give out. And that may include some canned 
or frozen vegetables and it also will probably continue to include a lot of those root vegetables. Cooking with these different types of foods during this, these winter months can be challenging. Opt for soups, for stews, again broths. Um, you can use bone broths and make lots of pureed soups, lots of vegetable soups, lots of, lots of hearty soups with um, gluten-free whole grains. I also love to use uh, wild rice, which is actually more of a seed um, than it is a grain. Um, I post a lot of these recipes uh, for, for different types of um, seasonal foods, both over on Instagram, and I have two uh, different winter recipe meal plans right now available on my website. The pinned comment is down below. It's called the winter meal plan for Hashimoto's, but pro tip, it works for anyone. These foods are supportive of optimal health and also of um, supporting your body during the winter, whether you have Hashimoto's or not, maintaining a healthy immune system, supporting good body composition, healthy metabolism, blood sugar regulation, healthy hair, skin, and nails. All of this is important for all people. So check out my meal plans um, in the pinned comments below if you really want to dig into some of these uh, resources. Lastly, before I finish today's video, which I know is long, thank you for sticking with me this to this point, I would like to encourage you to incorporate some probiotic rich foods in your diet. So hey, how about some fermented foods like drinking a kombucha from time to time, or maybe if you're doing okay with some dairy, you could have some um, kefir or maybe coconut kefir. Um, also, you can check out uh, just good old sauerkraut, kimchi, um, there tends to be a lot of different types of um, fermented fun things in the health food store refrigerated section that I love to check out. And just a little bit goes a long way, one to two tablespoons per meal if you're feeling adventurous or per day if you just want to try it out. These will last a pretty long time in your refrigerator if you keep the lid on tightly. Right now, one of my favorite things to do is to add um, a caraway, apple, and cabbage coleslaw, which I keep stored cold in my refrigerator, um, on top of cooked root vegetables, including beets and yams and red onions and carrots. And I use lots of fresh herbs and sea salt and roast those with coconut oil. And then they are delicious with coleslaw or um, sauerkraut just plopped right on top. And uh, it just really brings out the flavor. And it's a great way to incorporate all of those good microbiome gut health supporting um, uh, bugs in your body that you need for a strong immune system throughout the winter. Finally, hydrate. Hydrate, 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 hydrate. I can't say it enough. Think about how much you weigh, divide it in half, and that's the number of ounces of water you should drink per day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you should be drinking a minimum of 75 ounces of water per day or more. Um, you can incorporate herbal teas, fresh pressed juices. If you have a juicer, I have a Hurom. I love it so much. Um, I love to do like a fresh ginger apple beet and then dilute it with some water or some sparkling water and sip on that throughout the day. It's very hydrating and you can just kind of feel all that good nutrition that's getting absorbed without having to munch on the fiber. It's an alternative um, and in addition uh, to getting in your other vegetables. So thank you so much for joining me here. This is my top tips of things to pay attention to that might be getting in the way of your best health and some of the right foods to incorporate to get you off on the right foot for starting in 2021. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Send this along to some of your friends and family who you know could use a little boost before this holiday season is over. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Happy New Year.